Hello and welcome to my show Conversation with Priya. I'm your host Priya Mishra and today is a very special guest, Dr. Peter Ellis. Dr. Peter Ellis is actually a mentor and works closely with business owners who knows their products and clientele but need assistance in the understanding how to fundamentally develop and put in place the required changes to the very structure of their businesses over a short time. This is required in order, order to do that it can achieve and sustain profitable goals. For as a business transcends from the one stage to another, it is necessary for the company's management to become aware of new activities in line with the growth of the business. With over 30 years practical experience and highest academic level of business research, Peter is accepted as an experienced business pilot who can guide, assist and mentor owner through the dangerous uncharted channel and treacherous changing seas of the business world. Academically, Peter has a master and two doctorates in business strategy, education and sustainability during scaling and growth. He can assist firms stay in business and flourish. His knowledge enables business owners to understand what they should do to keep their firm steady and how to change their structure as it grows. So I would like you to help me to welcome Dr. Peter Ellis and we will get to know throughout his conversation how intelligent he is and I love his uh, slogan to himself. He says, your silent partner. So let's welcome your silent partner in our show, Conversation with Priya. Hi, Peter. Thank you for joining my show, Conversation with Priya. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. So let's start. My first question is that how did you start your whole journey as an entrepreneur, as a business owner? Um, well, first, of course, like most people, I, I didn't start in business until uh, I, I worked a couple of jobs. Uh, and uh, the main job that I worked at was a family business at third generation after I got my bachelor's in business um, that was just breaking even. Right. Um, and they didn't know why they were just breaking even. They just thought, well, that's life. Mm. So I suggested that I went around. I, I'm from the UK. So I said, look, let me take the, the goods around the country uh, and show them. And they said to me, everyone knows us. There's no point in you going around the country. Um, and we give you one month. And then if you can't get any sales, you're out. So what I did is I went up to Scotland and I went up to Manchester and Leeds and all over the place. Wow. Um, and within one month or actually three weeks when I came back, I had with me what they normally get in three months. Right. And they said, well, how did you do that? Everyone right. knows us. I mm. said, yes, they know you, but they don't come down to London. Mm. So they were very grateful that I came to see them. Right. And what I've done is I've now taken on board um, agents in Scotland, in Man Manchester, in Leeds and in different places mm -hmm. um, so that they can use all their customers and build the business up. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, then in my spare time, I learned French and German. I went over to Europe uh, and I did the same there and they couldn't cope with the sales. So I was sales manager. I then became production manager. Uh, and then I became general manager to run the whole place. But while I was doing that, other companies came to me and said, look, Peter, we can see what you're doing there. What did you do? How did you do it? What can we do to improve our business? Right. So after a while, I was earning more helping other people than I was being the general manager of this company. Right. So I was with that company for nine years. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started up my own consulting business right. slowly by the side and then totally. Mm. Uh, and I've been doing this full time now since 1985, which is quite a long time. Right, right. Um, I came over to Australia in 95 um, because uh, my wife, who's from Australia, from mm -hmm. uh, near a place called Warwick in Queensland, um, and so she wanted to bring the kids up. Uh, in Australia and I put my foot down I said look I want to have the last word she said what's the last word I said can I come and so we came here she brought me back as a souvenir um, <laughs> and I had to start again right so when I started again I found that um, everyone here seemed to have an MBA so I thought well I better get one of them 
Um, so I looked around to find one that I could get in the evenings while I was working. Mm -hmm. um, and I was building up my business, uh, helping people all over Queensland. Right. Um, but once I got involved in that, because I didn't think I needed an MBA because I thought I knew everything. Right. And then I did something which I hadn't planned. I actually opened up a textbook and right. I saw all this new stuff which I didn't know existed, mm. even after like 10 years in the business. So um, I then went on to do the doctorate. At, so at, at uh, University of Sunshine Coast, I did my MBA. Then I went down to Southern Cross University. Mm -hmm. and I did my doctorate, which was about business education to understand what were the best things that, that would help a business um, develop and, and, and become more solvent. Right. Um, and then I carried on doing this when I finished that while the kids were at school that I had to, that was expensive, I had to pay for. Uh, right. And when they went to university, I fell off the way and I said, right, well, I want to do a PhD now. So the idea of it was to say, what's the transition from a small to a medium business? That was the reason I was doing a PhD. Right. And when I looked right. into it, I discovered that there was ne there had never been a definition for a micro, small and medium as such, only as a comparison within an industry. Right. So what happens is you can have a small business in one country, in mm -hmm. one industry, that yeah. is larger yeah. than a medium business in the same country. Mm -hmm. So how can a small business be bigger than a medium business? Right. Only because it's within that industry. Right. Not right. overall. So what I did is I have now defined micro, small and medium mm -hmm. in a way that can be used anywhere in the world, in any industry, in any economy. That's what they are. Right. Uh, and that was all fine. But then I had to prove it. And when I went out to prove it, this is where I learned the big lesson that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's this that whilst about 85% are micro and they're happy and they just want to stay there, the other 15% want to grow. Right. But only 4% are small and only 1% is medium, which leaves 10% that is neither small nor medium because they're stuck in between. They're either stuck between micro and small, which is about... 5% or they're stuck between small and medium, which is about one and a half percent. And they don't know why. They don't know why they're stuck. They're stressed. They're, they, they can't understand what they're supposed to do or what they're not doing. They can't understand why competitors seem to be better managed, more profitable uh, and, and, and well organized. And they can't understand why they're not. That's where I fit in. Great. Because I have been discussing, I mean, I, we discussed this already before, that I have been discussing a lot of organizations and they, they have no understanding where they stand, where they fit into the overall this um, small to medium. Because by definition of government, it's a small to medium businesses, SMEs, medium businesses, and then a large businesses. But then there are so many in-betweens, you know? Yes. And it's a big struggle for them to actually define themselves in a much more concrete fashion. And then once you don't have that clarity, I believe clarity is brings the confidence. You cannot fake it until you make it. I don't believe in that definition. Absolutely correct, yes. You, yes. you are confident when you are clear. And unless you are clear, you won't get that confidence. And if you don't have a confidence, everybody can sense it. Once I show people where they are mm. and how they are in the transitioning section, mm. all the lights turn on. They say, of course, now I can understand why I'm stuck. Now I can understand what it is. Show me the steps I need to take to achieve what I need to do. And that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I work with people. And majority of coaching I have noticed they are not very much into showing them physically how actually it works. There are a lot of people actually go and tell you, oh, this is missing, that is missing, or you do that and you do that. But there are very few people out there who are 
showing you physically and you know helping you on the ground level to actually achieve what you need to achieve you know or you want to achieve yeah, yeah right? I, I... Well, and that's absolutely right, because what they do, and there, there's nothing, consultants, many, many consultants are very, very good. They all say, oh, I'm a business consultant, but what they mean is, I'm a marketing consultant, I'm a sales consultant, I'm an HR consultant. They, they specialise in those areas. Right. But what I've discovered is that all the research that's been done over the last 50 years, which is excellent stuff, mm -hmm. but what they've done is they've looked at the vision, they've looked at the skills, they've looked at the operations or the pro right. individually, like different pieces of the jigsaw. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is I've taken all those pieces of jigsaw, put them together to make a picture. Right. And when they can see that and they can understand what they're supposed to do within the whole picture, mm -hmm. then it makes building the business clear and precise and they can move very, very quickly. Right. Um, and because, as you say, until they know that, that and yes, they, they need someone to show them perhaps to do a bit of marketing. No mm. problem at all. That's quite right. That's I, I don't do that. They need someone to train their salespeople. I don't do that. What I do show them is how to structure their organization. So when someone says, are you a business consultant? I say, no. What I do is organization structure. So that as you're growing, your organization is structured in a way that is manageable and uh, focused so that you can put everything else in place. Sure. And uh, that brings to my next question to you. Like when people talk about organizational structure, they quite don't understand the, what all the areas of organizational structure like, you know, would you like to brief about it? Yes. Organization structure is broken down into five criteria. Right. These five criteria, ones that everyone knows about, mm. but what they don't realize is that you must have every single one of them working. And I'll just tell you what they are very quickly. Mindset's a very big thing that people are talking about. And you have to have a mindset for each one of those five criteria. You don't have one mindset for the whole deal. Right. Those five criteria are this the vision and the direction of the company right. and the skills within the company. Those skills are the technical skills, the management skills, the personal skills. Mm -hmm. Those two areas, those two mm -hmm. criteria are the personal ones that you look at. Right. Then there's three others. Those three yeah. others are the organization criteria. Mm -hmm. There's the, the um, organization structure. Mm -hmm. There's the processes and procedures and the culture or the action plan, what you're doing. Yeah. And that now, the thing is, you need all five of them because if any one of them is inadequate or missing, so if, if the vision is missing, then you're uncertain where you're going. If the skills are missing, there's incompetence. Hmm. If there's organization structure missing, there's conflict. Uh, if there's processes and procedures, uh, it's people are exasperated on what's going on. And if the culture or the direction is missing then you're leaderless you need all five of them to be to be to be um firing at the same time and what you do and this is what's really really important mm. at every size at every stage those five things are different right right so, so you have to know what you're supposed to be doing what skills are required at that level of business, what structures required at that level, um, what processes and procedures at that level. That's what I show people. And right. when they can see that and put them together and yeah. manage that. Right. That, so I, that brings to my next question. Business where... becomes straightforward, organized, profitable. Right. And you know, you know without profit, and what's no that? right? So we notice, notice no, no profit, no, no growth. Problem. And if you bring That's that true. to the profit level, and I can see you call yourself your silent partner, which is a very interesting term I have noticed in you. Why do you call yourself silent partner? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked, and I'll tell you exactly why. I was trying to think to myself when I was looking for the name of a company, what did I do? 
what did I actually do? Mm. And I act as a silent partner in the background working with the uh, senior management. Right. But it's an oxymoron because I am neither silent and I am not your partner. Right. So I don't go in to get shares and I don't go in to, to, to um, just be quiet in the background and do money. Um, the silent partner is more a, an idea of someone being there with you right. uh, by your side as you're building your business. Right, right. That's what I do. Very, very interesting. So there's a reason for it. <laughs> yeah, and I always believe if your inside is not fixed, you cannot go outside. It, it comes down to your capability, your serviceability, your customer experience. Everything is actually defined by your inside fixing. It's like, you know, a lot of yoga gurus and all they say that, you know, fix your inside, happy be inside. You know, if your inside structure is not smooth and, and you know, organized properly, I don't think you can service it well outside. Well, that's what they say. They, they, they say if you look at it, business like a like a, a vessel on the water, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter how much water's on the outside, you can manage that. But if you have too much water on the inside, too much pressure on the inside, that's mm -hmm. when you sink. Right. So yes, you 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 have to be able to uh, have a, a, a good uh, organization on the inside because then you can manage um, anything that goes on. Right. So that brings to that, how does it assist the client and how it is different, your services? Okay. Now, the reason, it, the way that it's, okay, the way that it's different is that no one has ever done uh, what, I, what I do anywhere, uh, which is because that came from my PhD where I discovered that there weren't any um, structures and organization within within uh, uh, the, the, the the current or, or the past uh, teachings right. um, so what I've done is I have a, a matrix which says mm -hmm. when you're this size or at this stage these are the different activities that go on uh, with those criteria so mm -hmm. that's all brand new stuff mm -hmm. and what do people get out of it self-confidence self-awareness the knowledge that they can understand what's going on. They choose what size they want to be. To be right. And I tell them, this is what you need to do if you want to be that size right. and you can be strong and profitable and well-managed because that's all you have to do. You do that and you know where you are and know what you can do. Right. And, you know, when when you talk about that, when you give this structure and that's your point of difference, because I have, I mean, I can already see the point of difference you are talking about that you have much more layers and you know those gray areas and the people who are stuck in between to give them the clarity and all. And that's your unique selling proposition. Not many people understand. And it's, it actually came out of all the way your research you have done. It's not just something yeah. you have came up with the overnight idea. It's, it's no, a research. No properly research is spended and you know this is this is there and it is working there so it's it's a very interesting angle I have when I first met you I it actually blew my mind because I was like not uh, not many people were thinking on those lines like you know giving that five different extra layers in between those government defined layer so it does make a lot of difference and I find it it's your unique selling proposition but what I'm trying to understand here if if what if I people are not seeing that and if they don't have that kind of an intent um, to or if the you call it in a, in a driving a blind spot for them, how would yeah. you actually give them that recognition that you know this is where this is how you can identify that you are where you are, right? So that people will know I have this problem and I need uh, Dr. P. Well, the, the blind spots are a very important part of business because. When you don't know what you don't know, you don't know that you need to change or do anything. Yes. But if you say, look, I know there's something not working. I know there's something not right. And I admit that uh, I admit that, that I don't know everything. Um, a great philosopher, Plato, uh, a really brilliant man said, there's one thing I know. And the thing that I know is that I, I know nothing. Right. Um, and his son said, who told you that? And he said, my wife. 
<laughs> the, the, the thing is that when in business, yeah. you yeah. put your hand up and say, look, I know my business. I know my clients. I know what they want. I know what's doing. But running the business side of stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, so I'm, I work a lot with professional organizations like, right. like uh, medical practices, uh, law firms, accountancy firms, uh, you know, wellness places and so on and so forth, because they know what they know. They know they're smart people. Right. They know how to do what they're doing. And they try and get as many customers as they can. Yeah. But they don't understand the business side of their business. Mm. Um, and if they're prepared to say, look, this guy is not pretending to be a, a, a medical practitioner or, or whatever, or an accountant, but he's got something that I need. Mm then they'll be open to it. And it's the same whether it's a, a, a manufacturing company, because my background was in manufacturing. Right. Uh, and they, they want to know, how do I structure and organise what's going on? Hmm. Um, that's the sort of thing that I do. But they've got... I can't fight them. Uh, if they say, I know everything and you can't tell me anything, that's OK. I, yeah. And I'll walk away because... Um, I'm not in the game of, of, of demanding that they listen to what I'm saying. They have to say, look, I can see that there's there's lots of people out there with like good ideas here and good ideas there. But what this guy does is he actually knows how these things work. He actually knows how an organisation should be structured, how the activities should go on and what should happen and how a business person should think yeah. in business terms yeah, yeah. Uh, and I want to know and 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 I don't want to take two years to do it I want to do it in three six months or you know or, or maximum a year depending on the size of my business right I want to do it quite quickly hmm. and that's what I do so so usually I go in for three to six months right. uh, and in that time we've taken them right the way through to where they want to go and then um, we move forward together uh, but not as intensely as before. It depends on the business. Right. And it means that what I'm hearing is it all comes to the mindset. And if they have the mindset to reach out to you and they are, have a question to ask, uh, you know, they know they, they are in a problem and they need to find out their blind spot, they can reach out to you, work with you, and you can help them to, you know, fix the issues in on five areas which we described earlier. Um, and which is very interesting and because a lot of people are, as you mentioned, it, you are not in a fight business or you're not in a persuasion business, but they also have to come up with that mindset that they need help, you know, and that's very important, isn't it? Well, yes, and that's why the silent bit in my business title is important because what I do is totally confidential Mm. Uh, because these are smart people who don't want people to think they're stupid, which they're not. No. Uh, but one of my biggest um, quandaries when I, before I even started doing this yeah. was why is it that so many smart people go out of business and so many less smart people do very, very well? And it's because the less smart people don't second thought themselves and don't they just get on with it. Yeah. Uh, and they don't they don't realize what they're doing they just just do it um and so once you know what you're supposed to do and they, they don't necessarily become uh, uh you know like richard branson's but they do um do very well within the size of business they've got uh, yeah. which is usually uh, micro and small and they do very very nicely thank you very much but um if you want to really grow and manage well, there's so many people are stressed to the max that I see um, that don't realize that they're doing that to themselves. And right. I can show them how to get, get that stress out of their business. Very interesting. So that brings to the, uh, my last question. What will All be right. the two cents uh, you would like to give anybody to identify, create that mindset and reach out to you? The two two cents what would you like to say the people how they can identify how they can reach out to you 
and uh, what will be your suggestion to the people who are in, in stuck in those positions? Okay, well, what I do, uh, first of all, is I listen to what you are, where you are, and what you want to achieve. I'm not going to tell you what size business I'm going to get you to have because you don't want that yeah. you want a business of this size you want this amount of free time you want this sort of income you want this sort of activity going on yeah when yeah. you tell me that i can then go through it with you immediately and say okay this is the size of business you want this is what you're doing let's have a look and see how we can achieve what you want not what i want what you want uh, because what you want is why you're in business right. uh, and that's that's what we do great and how people can reach out to you uh, well um, my my website is uh, ysp.com.au um, uh, and i'm on linkedin and uh, um, and so on you can find that but ysp.com.au uh, is my website which is the easiest one uh, and you can get my phone number there and you can um, my emails there and, and, and so on and so forth and there's some training um, courses that you can um, access from there as well uh, in the training section and you can see about me and what I do and, and, and so on um, that, that's that's what I have at the moment yeah great and all those details will be given below in the description so if anybody wants to reach out to dr peter please do reach out and it, i'm sure i've experienced it and i know it, he has a lot to value uh, offer to value add in your business proposition and visions to create and i am looking forward to hear him back again one one point of time but Please reach out to him. He's very active on LinkedIn. His website is given a few details, but going through his journey will be an amazing journey. I can assure you will definitely get a value and you will make your numbers and get your growth. And if you haven't subscribed and liked, shared and commented yet, please go and do so. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Dr. Peter. And thank you very much for having me. And thank you, uh, everyone out there in the Zoom world. Thank you.